Owning a house in a city is usually a desire of many. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you how my husband and I were able to acquire a house in Nairobi city. Uh, before we start off, allow me to share a little bit about my experiences when I was young with money. Uh, I, I learned how to live with little money and with less items, not by choice, but because they were not there. And so when I usually tell people that I'm a minimalist, uh, it's not something that I've just acquired up here. It's something that I learned when I was young and it was instilled in me and I've just carried it along with me. And so when I was young, I remember one time I was earning 7,500 Kenyan shillings a month. Uh, and I was able to support myself and also send something little home because I was supporting my parents then to pay school fees for my sister. And still, I, I, I mean, I could survive. I never borrowed anyone. So in terms of managing my finances and running the little or the a lot that I have in my hands and planning it well, I have been able to do that. And it did contribute to how we also managed to purchase our house. My husband and I were living in uh, in Ruaka and, and we used to, to go to church in uh, Karura Community Chapel. It's, it's near Ruaka. On and so in the church where we used to worship, there were small groups. We were set into small groups, uh, groups where you can meet with the rest uh, of the group members of church and have a conversation, do a Bible study, you can meet over a cup of tea, you decide where you want to meet. You could meet in someone's house or you could meet in a restaurant somewhere and go through a Bible study. And after that, then, you know, we'll just share and how are you doing, how is your family, you know, any, any way we can help you as a, as a, a group members. And so we, we plugged in, in that church, we plugged in the church. It is in this small group, where the magic happened. So it was after we've done the Bible study and now we, we are just having a chat over a cup of tea. And I don't know how this discussion started, but I remember uh, myself telling this particular member that, yes, even us, we have plans of purchasing a land in uh, Zika Road and then perhaps building later. And so he went on like, uh, how much were you planning to buy the land uh, for? And, and I remember I said, uh, maybe uh, the total uh, cost for buying the land and building, we were budgeting for around 2 million, 3 million. And, and he just smiled. And that's true, the 2 million or 3 million, I don't know where that rate came from because there was, we didn't even have such kind of money anyway, anywhere. And, and so it was just a random um, amount. And so he said, okay, let's talk after this. So we finished up our cup of tea and then I told my husband, you know, I talked to, to this guy and he said, uh, I told him about our plan and he said we could meet after, after our small meeting. So we went to see this guy immediately. He was a very friendly guy, a rich, friendly guy. And so he said, oh yeah, you talked about this. You know, there, there are these houses we are building uh, uh, in Kleleshwa and, and, and if you can top up that money, if you can give me uh, 4.5 million, and then uh, you pay two million later in a short time, then you could get a house uh, in Kleleja. From two million to 6.5 million. Okay, but then Kleleja was like, Kleleja, you know, you were thinking of Zika Road, I don't know where, but then Kleleja. So he explained the process, what was required of us to start off the process. And, and uh, when we went home, my husband was like, hey, where are we going to get that kind of money? I don't think that's something we really want to get into. And I'm like, ah, you never know why this guy came our way. We just have to get this money and pay off. And so we brainstormed on where to get that money because honestly, the kind of money we could get immediately. I remember we had saved in a... Uh, one of these housing financing uh, circles and uh, the amount of money that was in there was half a million and then uh, we had like a piece of land somewhere we sold it it brought uh, 750,000 Kenyan shillings so in total the amounts that we could collect from ourselves at that moment was around 1.5 million and yet uh, this guy needed 6.5 million within a span of six months and we had committed that we were going to do this. So it was tough. But then we brainstormed, brainstormed, and then decided that we were going to look out for people to ask for money. 
And so let me just share the, uh, say this. Why I'm sharing this story is to encourage someone that uh, with good networks, and I'm big on networking. In fact, I have written a book to that effect, and I will be sharing about that at some point. That uh, with good networks, it is possible to get some of these opportunities. So don't ignore those networks that you, you make in church. Don't ignore those networks that you create in offices and, this, and, and these other places that, that, that you go. It is in these small meetings, it is in these talks after church when you're having a cup of tea, when magic happens. It is during uh, those meetings when you are taking your children to, you know, Sunday school and you're meeting with these other parents and you start off a conversation where things happen. You don't know who's in that church and by just starting off that conversation, you never know what may become of that conversation. So, plug in. So we went out and so we looked out for a friend um, whom we trust and he trusts us and we asked for the money. Of course, they were hesitant, uh, not that because they thought we would lose the money, but because of the process. Uh, who is this? Who is building these houses? How do you know them? Are you not going? You may lose this money. Are you sure you're going to get this house? So finally, the person uh, loaned us um, uh, uh, four million. And uh, we've been paying that money, and I think it's, it's remaining like an year, um, just to share this. And we paid it diligently, and the best part about this loan is that it was given to us without interest. The second part of it, then we had to, to, to get a circle loan, a small, a small circle loan to top up, which, uh, which is almost done as well. In a uh, span of an year, we should be done with all our loans, and I, with the two loans, and I can't wait for the end of that. I don't like loans. That's the only debt we have and we hope to finish it by the um, by a year from now. And so the best part of it is that these guys promised to give the house to us in a span of two years and that happened. In a span of two years we had the house and we moved into our house. We've been living in this house. We like it. It's such a big house but uh, we hope at some point we can uh, just leave it out for rent and uh, live in another place. Those who purchased the houses where we live uh, purchased the houses for 12 million Kenyan shillings and the houses with the SKU are going for 13 million Kenyan shillings. Uh, to imagine that, you know, you could buy that house with half the price and the only difference is that you have to wait for two years for the houses to be complete. I, I mean, who would they want to go for that option? But of course, then you have to be on the lookout because uh, some of these... Um, out of out of plan uh, deals that come some of them are not very genuine so you may need to do your research you may need to have trust with the kind of people you're dealing with so there's a lot in the process but we are here and we thank god for a process that works well as i said this one is uh, I'm, I'm sharing this not for pride but just to encourage someone that some of these things are possible and don't uh, underestimate the powers of networking and connecting with people don't underestimate the relationships that you have created in the places in those small groups that you are in in the chama groups in the church in the office you know when you go out for a cup of tea with friends what are you talking about you know you may just hear your friend mention something that may benefit you and again who are your friends and what kind of things do you discuss with your friends how do you make the best use of your friendship because i mean in a friendship there's something that you're gaining from this other person while well, this person there's something they're gaining from you even if it's emotional support that's something it doesn't have to be financial but there's something that you bring into a relationship and there must be something that you get from that relationship so if you like this kind of content if you enjoyed the video please remember to like the video give me a thumbs up remember to subscribe and also hit the notification button so that you can get more of this content when I develop it. Thank you and bye.